For the final question of the month, we come to Eli's query. Everybody has their own definition of the word pretentious, and it can apply to multiple discussions about film. In your words, what makes an animated film pretentious instead of meaningful? He's right in that people often define pretentious differently in discussing film. And to be honest, that's why I never use the term myself. I find it's often misused, and it's usually a get-out-of-jail-free card to avoid further expanding on that analysis. It's usually applied to movies they feel are too indulgent, or has too many ideas, but whenever I read somebody call a movie pretentious, I just think of that famous scene from Annie Hall, with a film snob talking about Fellini and Marshall McLuhan. The dictionary definition of pretentious is attempting to impress by affecting greater importance, talent, culture, etc. than is actually possessed. So I would like to reframe the question to be about whether an animated film can indeed have loftier ambitions that it doesn't quite reach. And for me, the animated movie that immediately comes to mind is Pocahontas. The higher-ups at Disney had big visions for this movie. It was based on a historical event. It was going to tackle major themes like racism and colonialism and environmentalism. The main couple aren't even going to end up together in the end. This was a movie that wanted to be taken seriously, different from the vaudeville comedy of Aladdin, and certainly a far cry from that cute little lion picture Os being made around that time. That was even how it was pitched to the animators. Yeah, you could animate lions and meerkats, but Pocahontas is the most prestigious project we've ever done and is going to get us another Best Picture nomination. The Academy loved Beauty and the Beast, well, they will love this even more. Now, I do think Pocahontas had its heart in the right place, and the themes it wanted to tackle are concepts that can be explored in a Disney animated film. But I think Pocahontas, because it had these lofty ambitions, while still attempting to fit into the 90s Disney animated film formula, it felt like it was taking itself far too seriously. It also had the pressure of being based on real historical people. Or at the very least, the often told legend of Pocahontas and John Smith. The two of them just don't have much personality, so their romantic scenes lack the spark of Disney's last few romantic couples. Because, again, the movie wants to be oh so serious. So, we're going to take this romance seriously, but now, neither of them are all that interesting. You can also sense there were a million story meetings over how to handle the translation issue. We want to be taken seriously, but we need some magical shortcuts in there. The themes of racism are absolutely worth exploring, especially with the Jamestown settlement and how they took the natives' land. But it does it in a way that's really ham-fisted and showing in the audience's face. This is especially evident with the Savages song. Colors of the Wind, as wonderful a song as it is, also seems written with an intent to save the world. The ending, which has Pocahontas and John Smith staying with their respected people, is beautifully directed and brilliantly scored by Alan Menken, but also seems to come from a place of showing how the movie was willing to respect history, even though it distorted just about everything else. And it's hard not to think what happened after the end credits rolled. I think it's telling Disney has since avoided making more animated features based on real people. Oddly, aside from the musical numbers, I think the best parts of Pocahontas are the antics with the raccoon and the pug, which nonetheless feel shoved in there because Disney animated films always had funny animal sidekicks at the time. The Hunchback of Notre Dame also tackled serious themes, but seemed to integrate them into the narrative with more salty, and because it was based on a fictional story, the filmmakers had more freedom to handle those mature themes while still making their characters engaging. In 2016, Disney even released two animated films that tackled Pocahontas' themes a lot better. Rather than using real people and thus opening entire cans of worms, Zootopia was more allegorical in how it handled the subject of prejudice while Moana did a much better job of depicting an indigenous culture, taking inspiration primarily from mythology with a little bit of history of the South Pacific Islands thrown in, and actually bringing a sense of fun to the proceedings. I know you probably did not expect a whole spiel about Pocahontas, Eli, but that's where my mind immediately went to upon reading your question.